Well, if this isn't a bit of a surprise, two movies back to back that aren't absolute ass? Neat. Oddly enough, D&D is a tabletop that I did not get into, but have played, so I'm not going to go into this with a whole lot of knowledge and thus a general viewing experience. Before we do, please subscribe to help build my kingdom so you don't miss a new video. Dungeons and Dragons Honor Among Thieves begins with Chris Pine's Edgin and Michelle Rodriguez's Holga as prisoners because Elder Scrolls, am I right? They've been imprisoned because Edgin and Holga were the leaders of a small band of thieves after Ed's wife was killed by red wizards, so he turned to a life of thievery and was caught after an important heist went south. Edgen was attempting to obtain a relic that could revive the dead in hopes of bringing back his wife, but he and Holga were captured. After escaping the prison, Ed and Holga fast travel a few times and arrive at Neverwinter, where two of their former compatriots, Forge and Sophina, are. Forge is the new leader of Neverwinter, and Sophina is his muscle, being a very powerful sorceress. Once there, Ed and Holga have arrived to retrieve Ed's daughter, Kira, and the reviving Am Amulet. But Forge has convinced Kira that he is only here for the money and has them sent away with the guards secretly ordered to kill them. After a brief scuffle in which Ed does absolutely nothing, the pair escape and set out to gather the rest of the party. Simon, a low-level sorcerer who gets around doing parlor tricks but rolled a nat one in his ventures. And Doric, a tiefling druid, a part of the resistance fighting back against Forge's grab for the land in the forest that she lives in. Once formed, the group sets out on their adventure to rescue Kira, bring down Forge, stop Sophina, and not get turned into experience points along the way. The biggest strength right off the bat is the movie feels like it was written by fans or players of D&D. This is usually a point of concern because when someone says a project was made by or for the fans, I get flashbacks with movies like Warcraft. I make this point because there is such a thing as way too much. In the case of Warcraft, they tried to cram the entire first war into a two-hour movie, which is like trying to squeeze an elephant into a tube of toothpaste. D&D sticks to the strengths of the tabletop in which the story is often something fairly simple and doesn't throw an encyclopedia's worth of information at you. So if you're worried you won't understand anything because of your lack of knowledge, eh, don't worry about it. I can't even remember how to fill out a character sheet, and this movie maybe only lost me once or twice because I wasn't quite paying attention. Otherwise, I was able to follow along with it just fine. For example, I don't know what the hell an Underdark is, but it's underground and it's dark. All right, it's kind of in the name, I'll go with that. The movie also makes you feel like each moment is a bit more planned out, like these were moments for a campaign. Case in point, there is this sort of heist that takes place towards the end, and the team have to use their different skills and abilities to figure out their own way of entry into a vault inside of Neverwinter. The use of the items and skills to do so was fairly clever and fitting, so... Good job there. And despite a flaw that we'll get to later, it is nice to see some practical effects mixed in here to help this fantasy world feel more real, like uh, the Dragonborn in the Prison Council being a, a big animatronic suit, which is such a rarity today. The writing isn't half bad either. There's a good number of quips and plenty of jokes throughout the film that feel ripped straight from a campaign, like the graveyard scene, or <laughs> Reggie Jean Page as Zank the Paladin, or in D&D terms, the babysitter, who is played spot the fuck on. I'm not biased. And these characters fill out their roles really well. We all know the now cliched boss bitch is more annoying than vocalists breaking their voices while singing, but these characters do what they are meant to do. While Simon and Edgen are overshadowed quite a bit, they still do pull a bit of weight respectively. Simon's knowledge of magic and artifacts comes in handy, and while not the most proficient in magic, he is able to do enough with what little he knows, until he basically levels up at the end. On the other hand, Holga is a barbarian, so she does math about as well as a Baltimore elementary student, but she can lay waste to a group of enemies in physical combat. Everyone has their strengths and weaknesses. So, that's most of the good out of the way. Let's jump into the negatives, starting with Ed Again. Captain Failure here does almost nothing this entire movie. Sure, he comes up with plans and is the de facto leader of the group, but when it comes to combat, he's as useful as throwing a cabbage at a dragon. At one point, the group is about to be executed by guards, as mentioned before. So while Holga throws down like Brock Lesnar trying to guarantee he wins Wonka's factory, Edgin spends almost the entire bit of it trying to get out of his bonds. Or the final battle, where he shows up prepped and ready to go, but he ends up getting more 
ragdoll than a GTA hooker? Like, his main purpose is to talk about how much of a failure he is and how other people can do better than he can. Like, what kind of mental Aikido is this? Men that fail and give up aren't inspiring, so anytime Edgen tries to encourage, let's say, Simon to do better when attuning with the Helm of Disjunction, I can't take him seriously. That and Justice Smith seems to have a knack for filling out some of the most annoying roles out there. Also, the little side quest for Holga to get closure from her ex-husband is a complete waste of time. Traveling there was meant to be a big emotional moment for Holga, but she receives almost no real character development? Certainly nothing that would make me care about her, at least. Barbarians are basically the Broly of D&D &D and are meant to smash things gooder than other classes, so forgive me if I just don't buy it. And since Michelle Rodriguez has fewer dimensions than the Terminator on an assembly line, I couldn't give two ounces of melted kobold candles about her as a character. Also, at a later point, the group is captured, and despite being at the villain's mercy, she just gives them a chance to live by allowing them to enter the arena? Why? I get it when a DM wants to give players a chance to survive and finish the campaign by intervening, but this is a movie that's supposed to be in that world? For as lighthearted as this film is, the main villain is is trying to bring about an army of the dead and is played more serious than a heart attack, so that doesn't work either. And while many of the locations on paper are great, the $150 million budget should probably have been put more into the practical effects as some of the green screen is so blatant it resembles Thor Love and Thunder. Listen, I enjoy the body positivity dragon as much as the next person, but something that big moving as quickly as it does when it looks like a cat that can't roll over could have used some refinement. Oh, and last Lastly, the single greatest inaccuracy of this movie. The whole campaign ends in less than two hours. Anyway, so there you have it. Another decent film right after John Wick that's entertaining, if a bit flawed, that was actually enjoyable. It's kind of funny, this out-of-nowhere comedy is better than most of the recent orc stains the fantasy genre has put out recently, so good on them. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.